power is a little stronger today. Um, but I also think that this is part of a global phenomenon. Um, the market is a little bit nervous, of course, about the UK policy that's been announced. But let's not forget that there's been a big sell-off in bonds globally, which started probably a week before, after the Fed announcement on rates, um, and has persisted since. So I don't think this is particularly unique um, to the UK. Um, and I think also the market needs a bit of time to digest around the actual growth, you know, the aspects of the growth policy that have been announced in, in the UK. And some of this is very interesting, deregulation, lower taxes. I, th I think in the medium term, this could actually be very, very helpful. But the market has chosen to completely ignore it. And I think really what's happened is that sterling and gilts have been swept up in a wider global phenomenon. I, th I think we all like to think that the UK influences global markets from time to time, but I somehow doubt it. I think there's a, a global thing going on. Um, and in the meantime, I think the UK might quietly get some growth going over the next six to nine months. Uh, and that has been studiously ignored. There's a, a more general inflation panic going on around the world. Um, and I think if that eases off, then we may see some more stabilisation in, in the UK. Uh, but it's a test of nerves at the moment, isn't it? When, when speculators and uh, investors, in inverted commas, uh, smell blood in the water, you get a feeding frenzy. And it felt a little bit like a feeding frenzy when we saw that big move on the gilts and on the pound here. So it's a test of nerves with the Treasury and with the Bank of England at this point. We got a rather anodyne statement from the Bank of England. Do you think it's right to hold the line here until the next meeting? Or should it? move on rates to provide some some backbone to the pound? Well, I don't think the Bank of England's job is to shore up the pound. The Bank of England's job is to deal with inflation as it sees it. And yes, there's an argument that actually if, if the currency collapses, we're going to import a whole bunch of inflation and that's not very good. Um, but I think it's quite a departure when you start intervening in the currency. So I think the Bank of England is actually right to hold off on that. But let's see where we go. This morning, cable you know, showed some signs of stabilisation. Uh, and I think there has been a whiff of panic. Too much, too much talk of the UK becoming an emerging market. You know, I, I think that's a, a little bit premature. I, I know things are pretty bad in this country and have got worse, you know, over the last few years. Um, but I think it, it's too premature to, to start talking about it as, as an emerging market. Somebody even said the Mediterranean without the weather, you know, we're becoming a Mediterranean country without the weather. I think, I think that's too harsh. So I, I prefer to frame this uh, as a global phenomenon. I think the Bank of England should hold off um, before r raising rates any further. And you know, by extension, I think there's, it's problematic to talk about the Bank of England raising rates significantly from here anyway, because we are dealing with a supply phenomenon. The UK is dealing with a supply phenomenon. Its labour market has been decimated since it left um, you know, the European Union. We won't get into that too much, but you know, a lot of this is supply driven. A lot of people quit during the pandemic, you know, particularly the, the over 50 cohort. Um, and some of that might actually be reversible. There is some evidence of increasing labour participation amongst older people, which I think is a great thing. There's too much ageism in the UK. Uh, and that may stay, start to deal with some of the labour market um, inflation. Um, so I, I think the Bank of England should hold pat um, and, and not get too you know, tied in with, with the idea of currency intervention.